What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex. In today's video, I really wanna talk about why all my fish are in quarantine. You guys were asking that uh, in the comment section when I was talking about the quarantine system, you guys noticed that some of my fish were in there. And I really wanna talk about why they're in there, what's been going on over the last month or so that caused some concern. And uh, it's all in preparation for the 300 gallon build, but I really wanna break down what has happened and some of the things that I've noticed over the last year or so with my hippo tang that have really caused me to go ahead and put everybody in quarantine. So let's go and get into it. All right, so let's go and talk about the blue hippo tank first, since that is really the main reason why all this is happening. And uh, if you guys remember, I added her to the 125 gallon reef, and um, she's been doing very good since then. Has basically uh, no real issues. Uh, she's a great fish. She's not a bully, and uh, I really, really find her to be one of my favorite fish. Now, the only issue is, is when I received her. Um, back before I put her in the 125, she had ick, and it was really, really bad. Um, I mean, basically, she was kind of blue, but mostly white, and uh, I really didn't think she was going to make it through quarantine. Now, I originally put her in and treated her with copper, and it seemed to be working. You know, basically, she was still alive after two weeks of treatment, and things were starting to clear up, but uh, usually after I do a treatment, I go ahead and I leave them in there for another four weeks to, just to see if the ick will come back, and unfortunately, two weeks later, it came back, and it was just as bad as it was before. So at that point, I decided to kind of skip on the copper treatment and go ahead and put her in hypo salinity. And uh, I went and did that for about six weeks or so, giving us that total of about 13 weeks worth of quarantine. And uh, she was fine. Ever since then, um, we put her in the main display. She was good, and there wasn't really any issues. Now, I did notice every month or so with her, if uh, you know she would get stressed out for whatever reason, if you know another fish was picking on her, uh, even though she was the biggest fish in the tank, she still got picked on, which was kind of weird. And uh, she would end up showing one or two spots around the top of her head. And it, it looked like ick. It really never put a, a big concern because no other fish were infected. And I was adding a lot of tangs to that tank, if you guys remember that. And uh, every you know couple months or so, she'd get one or two spots, and it would be gone the next day. So I really never wasn't really a big concern it wasn't worth tearing my tank apart to try to catch her and uh, put her in quarantine again and uh, yeah so basically I just kind of left it the way it was since it really wasn't causing any issues now ever since we moved uh, if you guys remember I, I mentioned that I lost a couple fish during the move on uh, that entire process it was really stressful I ended up breaking a low boy tank so everything that I had and all the fish had to stay in one tank and it was a pretty stressful time now she didn't have any issues, nothing popped up, no spots that I noticed, and uh, I thought everything was okay. But if you guys remember, I went ahead and got that new RODI storage barrel because there was some kind of chemical in the one that I had that uh, didn't really show face until after I started using it with RODI water, and uh, it was causing issues with my frag tank with algae. Um, the fish weren't eating right, Reggie wasn't eating, so there was just something in that barrel that was causing issues. Now, I think whatever was in there uh, really stressed her out. She stopped eating, she started getting spots over her head. So at that point, I went ahead and I removed her and removed all the other fish from the tank and put them in quarantine. That's why you guys have been seeing them in there uh, during the quarantine videos. Now, I treated everybody with copper from the beginning. Uh, none of the other fish ever had any signs of ick or any, any kind of parasites that I could see, but I went ahead and dosed them with copper anyways just to make sure that uh, we can cure it. Now with her, she's been in copper for two weeks and it's the max dose of copper that I can give and she's just still covered completely in white spots and uh, it's not doing very well at all. So now that I'm seeing that copper really isn't doing what it should, I'm gonna go ahead and transition her uh, into the hyposalinity like before and then go through that whole process, you know, six to eight weeks, probably 10 weeks. I'm going to push it a lot farther and a lot longer than I did previously because whatever she had, it was dormant and I think that it stayed with her this entire time. Meanwhile, not infecting or bothering any other fish but her. And um, I don't want that to happen again. I don't want her to go into the 300 and have another outbreak with a couple spots every couple months. I don't want that. So um, the game plan from here is to go ahead and put her in hypo. Hopefully she will make it through that process. I should have her at uh, 1.009 specific gravity here in the next day or two, but she's been laying on her side. She's breathing heavy. So I don't know if she's gonna make it into hypo salinity. So uh, you know, keep your fingers crossed on that. As we, uh, as for the rest of the fish, I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep them in copper for another week. Then I'm going to transition everybody into hyposalinity, and they're going to stay in there for 10 weeks. I'm going to push it as far and as long as I possibly can. And um, it looks like the only thing that's going in the 300 gallon for the next month or two is going to be Reggie the snowflake eel. And uh, I'm sure that he's not going to be mad about that, considering the fact he's been in that 60 gallon cube since February. And I know that he's ready to get out of that tank. 
But uh, it does suck. Um, I will be ordering other fish. I will be putting them through quarantine. So it looks like, um, you know, my main fish from the 125 will be staying in quarantine probably longer than the new fish that come in. And that's just kind of how it is right now. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to take any chances with this build. And that's really what I'm getting at in this video is, uh, as you guys know, I've, I've done the hypo, I've done the copper, and it's still coming back. Um, really, all you can do is just keep pushing forward. Now, I haven't really done a lot of research on different strands of the parasite. I know that over time, um, different, you know, just like viruses in humans, they become immune to certain things. Um, they evolve and, and kind of, you know, become a stronger version of themselves. And uh, I think that might be what's going on with her particular parasite. Either way, we're going to put her, put her in hypo. Uh, cross your fingers. Hopefully she'll make it through. And um, we're just going to push through on this quarantine and uh, you know, if I have to go six months without putting my main fish in the tank, um, that's kind of what's going to be. So either way, guys, I just wanted to share this with you. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. I know it's not going to be that entertaining, but uh, I wanted to share this information with you guys and kind of uh, answer that big old question of why my fish are in quarantine. Either way, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.